Well, we're here today with Jelena Kennedy, Paul Nolan, two of the stars of Jesus Christ Superstar. Paul, you've got a bit of a history with this role. They tell me that it's a role you were born to play. <laughs> <laughs> well you've done put. it before, in other words. Uh, I have, yeah. Uh, I played it twice. I played it when I was 25 and again when I was 26. And you're about to ask me, why do I keep getting cast? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have no good answer for that, uh, but I'm glad I, I am. I love that part, and I, and I got a lot out of playing it before, and I'm really happy to be doing it again and exploring it again. I love what he was trying to do. And because I respect that, I think, I hope that I can honor it for the people in the world that he was so important to. Julina, what was your first experience of Jesus Christ Superstar? Do you remember? I played a soul sister <laughs> at Theater Aquarius when I was, uh, I think I was 20 or 21. Yeah. And I understudied Mary. Did you? Um, but when I was a kid, my mom and dad loved the show and they had the, you know, they had a record player in the basement. And they would, we would play the Brown album and my dad would dance around and we'd like drum it out. And then funny enough, when I was on tour with Mamma Mia, JC Superstar was there with Carl Anderson as Judas. You know, so we were at the, uh, at the bar and I got to meet and hang out with Carl Anderson before he passed away. So I, now that I'm doing it, I feel sort of that I'm, you know, I'm very lucky to be getting another shot. So what about your character? Again, you understudied it before, so coming to it again in a way, who is Mary in this version of the story? Well, she's a, I th I've, now that I know it a little better and I've talked to some people about it, she's a very controversial character. I didn't realize how controversial <laughs> until I started, you know, doing the research and talking to people about her and what they think of her. I, I believe that, uh, you know, uh, whether or not she was a prostitute, it doesn't matter. The fact is, is that she is a devoted follower of Christ and that relationship is the most important thing and her relationship to Judas and to the rest of the Apostles is what makes uh, that interesting. And, and I think in general the relationships between those people is what is interesting about the show. No. You, you know, then you can start to get away from the pressures of the size of that story that you're telling. Because it can seem overwhelming if you don't focus on the stuff that's real and that's in front of you and the people that are there. Well, Des Makinoff, of course, who's, who's directing the show, um, has, I mean, he's said a few times that it's a love story. Yeah. Um, is it a love story in, in, in more than one dimension? Oh, I think so, definitely. Yeah. And, and also a love story with God, about you know, your relationship with God, whatever that is. So, right. you know, you've got each other, and then you've got that other element that makes it magic. Yeah. Well, and, and, of course, one of the fascinating things with the biblical account, as, as indeed with Shakespeare, is the different versions, mm -hmm. you know, the four Gospels, <laughs> oh. which don't always mesh together, just as the various versions of Shakespeare's plays don't mesh. The mystery at the heart of Shakespeare's plays makes them great, and the mystery at the heart of this story, right, is, is the ultimate mystery, right? And it, it gives us a lot of freedom, too, because it was originally a, a rock album. Yes. So, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of story. So yeah. it's up to Des to create something. Des has been encouraging all of us to just make choices that are story-driven and that are not necessarily from a personal background, but to make ones that are dramatically strong. It's, it's different in many ways from the traditional musical theater that we did at Stratford for many years. You know, and I'm interested in the kinds of challenges that that's posed for, for both of you, uh, or, and also what is exciting about it for both of you. The rawness is, to me, of the first album, just makes it the best. It's, it's really, really um, true. And uh, the voices are sensational. You know, these people, it's just, glorious rock voices. The, what they didn't have to do was act it and do it eight times a week. So for myself, this, the music isn't, dif isn't difficult. I can put that sound in my voice um, and try to honor the genre of it. But once you add the, the passion behind it, it makes it a much harder sing because you're not just singing it for quality, you're singing it because what's important in acting or dancing or singing is, I think, the heart behind it. And kind of on that note, I find it 
because the first act and the second act are both 45 minutes long, it's so short and I feel like you get no time to tell the story. You know, if you don't nail those things, then it's gone and you don't have anything to build on. So it's, it's fast. And I always feel, I felt like this last year too, that when you get to the end of the show, it's like a whirlwind has happened and you wonder, did I have time to <laughs> tell or to say what I wanted to say? You know, yeah. and you do, but it's just, it's so much more condensed. Can you say a little bit about how this is being staged and what it's going to sort of look like? They've created a set that I think is simple, huge, uh, entertaining, and functional. So, yeah, th there's a lot of steel. <laughs> I have never been at a design presentation where the cast suddenly burst out in applause yeah. twice during yeah. the design presentation. It's spectacular. It is pretty awesome.